We're following breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Roy Williams is ready to call it a career. After 33 years in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Lawrence, Kansas, three-time national champion with the Tar Heels, will end his career with 903 wins as a head coach. There is a press conference for the Hall of Famer scheduled at Dean Smith Center, 4 p.m. Eastern, held virtually here as a tweet held out by the program talking about Roy Williams, thanking him for what he has done and meant to everyone who has played and loved our game. All right, with the breaking news, we've got Matt Norlander, who's our, part of our coverage for the Final Four in Indy. And Matt, just given the natural date and the calendar, there was initial thought that perhaps this was some kind of April Fool's, but clearly it is not. What more can you tell us here? Yeah, it is not an April Fool's joke. Uh, I did make sure and confirm with the source at North Carolina but the biggest job in college basketball, the best job in college basketball, in my opinion, has just opened. And uh, this is obviously a very significant headline. This is about as big of a headline as you can get outside the Final Four while the Final Four is going on. North Carolina is a highly coveted post in college hoops. Roy Williams, uh, this is not a stunning decision. I want to be clear about this. There had been uh, wonderment in college basketball over whether or not uh, Roy would wind up retiring soon. I mean, I, I personally, I'm, I'm flashing back to conversations with sources a week or two ago. Uh, you know, just inside college basketball, wondering if there might not be another coach, you know, in the Roy. He, a couple sources just mentioned, you know, well, one of these guys who's highly accomplished just wind up, you know, just stepping away after this trying COVID season. And here we have it. Uh, 903 and 264 career record. The man went to nine Final Fours, won three national championships, went 485 and 163 at UNC. Uh, uh, he would always, Roy Williams would reject the idea that he was the best coach in Carolina history. I understand that. Dean Smith, I think, would be considered that because of how long he was there and what he did. But Roy Williams, in his time there, uh, certainly uh, he exceeded any kind of expectation that he would have put on himself or the fan base. He did an amazing job uh, going back to his alma mater and bringing North Carolina back to the peak of the sport there. So, highly significant news. A Hall of Fame coach is stepping away. And now uh, just a, a, a treasure trove of a job opens in college basketball. And we're two days out from the final. This is this is a uh, just a, a rocking headline. There's just no doubt about it. And uh, Roy Williams will now get to play all of the golf that he wants and enjoy his retirement, having left the Carolina program uh, in very good standing and in a position where it can continue to be, you know, a top five program nationally. All right. So I've got a, a few things to follow up on, but let me just start with what you mentioned about this job now being the head coaching vacancy, in your opinion, the best there is in the entire country. Then what kind of pressure is the program under to find the right person? And what type of candidate would be a good fit in Chapel Hill? There will be plenty of pressure to find the right person. Uh, if you follow Roy Williams, you are following a legend. Now, it's a different kind of situation. Uh, North Carolina is the rare school where it, has, it can claim two of the 10 to 15 best coaches in the history of college basketball. So you're not following the one and only legend at Carolina, but you are following the guy and it's gonna be a tough, uh, it's a tough thing to, to step into, no doubt about it. Uh, since it is North Carolina, anyone and everyone who would be um, considered a, an ideal candidate for it will, will probably have interest. Um, a name in college basketball you're going to hear uh, is Wes Miller. I don't. I wouldn't tab him as a front runner at this point. Obviously, he played for Roy Williams. He has coached at UNC Greensboro for a decade. He is considered one of the best up and coming coaches. He brought Greensboro to the NCAA tournament this season there, and he is quite obviously going to get a look there. But um, just just so we're clear, there are uh, no shortage of really talented coaches and outside the Carolina family as well. You know, Hubert Davis is on the staff there. Uh, I would think that he's going to get a look. But anyone uh, of any level of accomplishment that's a sitting head coach, North Carolina will have its 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 pick of almost anyone to at least get interest. Not necessarily that they could pluck anyone from any other job. Not necessarily saying that. But uh, but yes, there are no shortage of interesting candidates. If there's any big name in college basketball you want to consider, um, rest assured, North Carolina will be targeting them for potential interest. And then at the NBA level, you know, the North, I understand 
uh, what there's been discourse recently about if you're an NBA coach, the idea that you would willingly go back to college is not nearly as enticing as it once was. And while that is true, uh, I do think North Carolina is an exception. It is that good of a job. I would put it slightly ahead of Kentucky as the number two job in college basketball and then slightly ahead of Duke as the number three job in college basketball because Duke's been good before Mike Krzyzewski, but it has been something different altogether under Mike Krzyzewski. So the point I'm making here is that North Carolina is such an enticing job. You've got the Jordan brand, Michael Jordan's affiliation, that even um, if North Carolina chooses to try and go into the NBA ranks just to see if there might be interest there, I, I think it has as strong of a chance as pulling of pulling someone from the NBA as any other school could. All right, let me get back to, to Roy a little bit. Matt, I, how would you describe maybe the last couple of years, because you mentioned maybe this is not a, a huge surprise or, or even a shot that this might be happening. Has, did he change at all with the media? Obviously, in recent times, uh, the short scheduling came under some criticism as they were trying to get to the tournament, obviously. Well, the, the way he deals with the media, the way he interacted with people like you, did that, that change at all indication that this was nearing? No, not explicitly. Not, not in dealing with the media overall. Um, but there was just general curiosity. I mean, fairly or unfairly, uh, because Roy Williams has had health issues uh, somewhat consistently and varying kinds of health issues somewhat consistently over the past, you know, seven or eight seasons, there's always been this, you know, when might Roy retire? And there was a belief that he would not be going, you know, like Jim Beheim. There's a belief Jim Beheim might coach until he's 80 years old. That was never a thought with Roy Williams. There was uh, kind of a, an assumption that he would step away you know, early 70s, and and indeed, I mean, he's 70 years old, 70 years old now. That is, uh, that's what's happened here. But no, there was like writing on the wall. No, uh, recent curiosity over whether he would. Yes, uh, the fact that it has landed here. Let's be honest. Like this, this is a surprising headline in the here and now, two days before the national semifinals here. Uh, but nonetheless, good for him. He's obviously at peace with this decision, and. You look back at what he's done over the past 18 years at North Carolina, and it is a terrific job. Through that that span of time, with what Carolina's been able to do, three national championships, 2005, 2009, 2017, and that 2009 team has a case of being, Tommy, one of the two or three best teams of the past two decades, uh, multiple All-Americans, Lottery picks, you name it. Uh, he did an incredible job there uh, for Carolina. And again, he leaves the programs uh, in really good standing for whomever is tapped to come in and replace him. Yeah, we talked about it this morning on CBS Sports HQ. Gonzaga could be in that 2009 and those Kentucky teams shortly after in the conversation for best team of the last, what, two decades or so. Before I let you go, Matt, one more thing. And you, you talked about his 18 seasons at North Carolina. There's some of us that still remember his 15 seasons at Kansas and what as well. And so before he was able to win those national championships, the success he had at Kansas and then a little bit of criticism for not being able to win uh, the big one. How do you best describe that time frame and that era to those who maybe don't know or, or maybe have forgotten? I'm glad you brought that up, Tommy, because Kansas was a powerhouse. You can actually argue that Roy Williams' 1996-97 Kansas team is among the two or three best teams to ever not make a Final Four. It was so, so good. In total, Roy Williams, uh, he went to 19 Sweet 16s, okay? His Sweet 16 record was 13-6. and six. His Elite Eight record, 9-4, and four, went to 13 Elite Eights. Incredible run there, and what he did at Kansas was was amazing. You can make the case that Roy Williams is the best two-school coach in the history of college basketball. Because when we talk about the greatest coaches ever, uh, you know, Adolph Rupp and what he did at Kentucky. Dean Smith, what he did at North Carolina. Mike Krzyzewski, what he's been able to do at Duke. Bobby Knight, what he did at Indiana. So many of the best coaches ever, most of their accomplishments, or at least a heavy majority of them, happened at one school. With Roy Williams, yes, a bit more happened at Carolina than at Kansas, but when you take into account how often he had Kansas as a top five team in the country uh, throughout his almost his, his entire tenure uh, in Lawrence and what he was able to do with the Jayhawks from the early 90s all the way until he left in 2003, Yes, uh, he had KU rolling. There's no, he didn't win a he didn't win a championship. I understand that, but it was a top five program when he was there. And I do think that he is the best two school coach 
in college hoops history. All right, Matt Norlander there with the inside of the information of the breaking news at Roy Williams, ready to call it a career. Again, a press conference in Chapel Hill set for 4 p.m. Eastern. Matt, thank you very much. He is the co-host of the Ion College Basketball Podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.